What is going on, everybody? We are back for another episode of the Pile Driver Podcast. I'm your co-host, Dean Big Zog Samples, followed by Mike, the best in the world. Alan, how you doing, brother? I am great, my man. How are you? I'm good. I'm even better. As you can see, we are joined by a special guest, a familiar face, one near and dear to us. You Yo, might call him Double Play CLE. You also might know him as the voice of OCW. Yo, Polly, how you doing, brother? Doing good, guys. Thanks for having me. I hear we've got a, a big show coming up this Saturday, OCW Ignition, and I'm here to talk all about it. The hammer. The hammer is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. The hammer. We do have a big show coming up this weekend, and obviously, you know, we wanted to get you on here to get your input about some of the stuff that happened at Tradition, some of the stuff that's upcoming for Ignition, which was... First of all, the the distance between these two shows was just what two and a half weeks, three weeks. Yeah, Max not even years. that. It's it's about two weeks, and then we're right back in the saddle again. Let's go. It's almost like for OCW tradition was the closing of one chapter and the start of another with ignition. Yeah, I mean Literally. tradition ended phenomenally in my opinion. Um, there was a lot of surprises. Actually, we talked about it on the show last week. Um. Let's get into it. Let's get into that six man, the brass ring, Polly. My question to you is since you probably know more about this, now Ryan Michaels can go after Chuck and the Ohio Heritage title with that. He could go after Brute and the heavyweight title, or he could grab himself a partner and go after the winners. He can go after any championship. Okay. And okay. that's the that's great thing about the brass ring as compared to, say, WWE with their Money in the Bank contract is was for the longest time strictly for the heavyweight championship. This brass ring opens it up to everything. So it puts every champion in OCW on notice. You have to have your head on a swivel because you never know when the brass ring holder is going to come and take it. That's yeah. true. <clears throat> that's true. I know as a commentator, you we're, we're trying to not get you biased, but we're trying to start a little controversy here. Was bias? Ryan, Me? Was, I'm not biased at all. Was Ryan Michaels your pick to win the Brass Ring Gauntlet? So, like, hmm. starting at the beginning, Paulie, we already know the results. Who would you have picked coming out the gate? Would it have been Ryan Michaels? Because that wasn't no. my pick. I picked Brian Huff. He started off with Aaron Williams. I like Jake on that one. I thought he would slime ball his way into the, the win somehow. And he almost did. Apparently did he, his injury did he was sell fake. You? Oh, he did, had me hook, line, and sinker. Same. We said that last week on the show. He had good. I saw like, his I, mother over in the in the dude, and that's what got me to, come over the barrier. That's what got me is like, because, yeah, sure, I understand that Jake's a wrestling slime ball, but outside that's still my butt, and I don't want him to get hurt. Like, right. I, you know, like, I don't want anybody to get hurt. And I, like, I saw him go down, and I was like, oh, shit, he's fucked up. And, yeah, I heard he's, the I heard the fall. He slime ball thunder it kicked his way in there and wild. almost won it. it and I think cool. for, on the broadcasting side of it, we don't know what's going on over there. So we have to roll with the punches, and we've got a match in front of us at that point, which was Aaron Williams versus Ryan Michaels. And we were under the impression that Ely had been eliminated due to injury, so we have to focus on what we think is the final two of the Brass Ring Gauntlet, which, if you were to pick a final two for the Brass Ring Gauntlet, you couldn't pick two better people for that match. I mean, I agree. Aaron Williams has stolen the show in OCW every time he's been here. I agree. And he's been Brian Michaels that. is just right there on the cusp. He needs something to put him into that next level of superstardom, and maybe uh, the Brass Ring is it. Well, let's let's talk about another guy that was in the brass ring that I'm we're going to use his name to segue into our next point. And I think that the future for the professional Brandon Fields is going to get a whole lot brighter these days. I agree. You won't have a shadow at ringside, that's for sure. Okay, so if you're not privy, OCW has announced what yesterday or what earlier today. Uh, it would have been Friday. Okay, Friday. Well, that Friday. Nick Han has disbanded the Hontourage. He has stepped away in the interview before the show with O. Pauly in his pre-show interview at Tradition. He said that if Warhoss didn't even win, he kind of just shunned Brandon Mike or Brandon Fields away anyways. He didn't really give a shit about Brandon anyways and said if Warhoss didn't win, he would quit. Well, the winners won the tag team championships, not Warhoss. 
And as of Friday, Nick Khan has took his proverbial ball and went home, so to speak. Yeah, that was weird. Um, when we were conducting the interview, I genuinely didn't think he was serious. Because when Nick Khan talks, you have to look around to make sure that there's a notary around. Otherwise, it's probably a lie. Exactly. Yeah. But when he said that, I was just like, wait, did he just, what? And you can even see it on my face. I don't genuinely believe Anything what he said. I, I still won't personally believe it. I think over the years you've kind of learned not to believe anything he said, period. But well, I, I won't believe it until we get to Ignition on Saturday <laughs> and he's not there. And Brandon Fields is out there fighting and Warhaus is out there fighting. And that's it. Because he's, he's not proven to be a truthful individual. No. I mean, how I think personally, sorry, I know it got dark real quick. <laughs> I personally think that Brandon Fields and Warhawks are both going to fare better without Nick Khan interfering at ringside. We talked about this, especially with you before, Paulie, that he has done nothing to – basically help them he has not provided they're like what 50 50 right they're like 500 if that they've had a pretty rough record so for them to be sans 500 with a supposed to be one of the best managers in the game they'll be fine they'll be fine without him one thing i want to ask you paulie what what happens with jock samson well that's where i i'm a little bit fuzzy on this is it seems really sus- suspect to me that he made this decision as we come to find out all of that breaking news that we broke during tradition about the fact that Warhaus's breakup was caused by Nick Hahn, that he was the one who instigated that clause in the contract way back when, that he was the one who broke up Warhaus with the intent of reuniting them and setting them on a path of destruction at his hand seems very suspect to me that he would suddenly knowing that he, that I had that information during the interview. I could have asked him about that. I chose not to Why? because again, I don't trust a word that comes out of his mouth. Man, he's a he's uh, dude, he's very snaky. He's always been very snaky every time yes. he's done anything with us or talked about us or anything like that. He's always been super super snaky. So it's again, like Paulie said, it's hard to believe anything that comes out of his mouth. You don't know if he's telling you truth, if he's telling you bullshits. It's Nick. I don't know. Like I said, I mean, I can't say it enough. I think all wrestlers involved in the Hontrage will be better off without him. Um, At this point here, oh, oh, I'll use his own vernacular against him at this point. It's safe to assume that Nick Han is the red drinker of the Hantaraj. Yes. Oh, God. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, he, has, he has done nothing to help his team, nothing to help the people around him. All he does is complain and carry that little ugly dog. And also keep in mind, over the last two tradition events, the Hantaraj has lost at each of them. In yeah. every match, they were a part of it in tradition. Two years ago was the big uh, warfare matchup, Entourage versus OCW, beaten. Even when they had a four-on-three advantage, they somehow lost. Yeah. So, then you come to this year and you lose the Brass Ring Gauntlet match with Brandon Fields. No fault of Brandon's. He showed out, I thought. I thought he looked really good. Yeah, he did a great job. Brandon did a great job. Brandon always wrestles real good. And again, I think he's hindered. The fans don't like him because he's attached to Nick Hahn. Brandon can wrestle. Okay, Brandon okay. Fields reminds me a lot of Bret Hart. Uh, that's what I said. Brandon can wrestle. Like, he can really go. And he just gets hindered because nobody even wants to pay attention to him because they're too busy talking shit to Nick Hahn. Shout out to Crazy Granny for that. Yeah. Good <laughs> Granny. Granny loves Nick Hahn. Ah, uh, she, she loves, loves to him. hate him. No, I mean, that's that's him. fine. That works. Jack um, Sampson, by the way, you asked about him. That's the, the question mark in all of this, because we haven't seen Jack in quite a while. No. He's been in, in and out. 
I worry that Jack's going to be the thing that brings Nick Han back somehow. And that Jack comes back and says he needs him or something to that effect. Something to that effect. And that worries me because if Brandon Fields and Warhaus are on the war path and they're just doing their thing and all of a sudden Nick pops up again, I don't want to see them get set back by the return of their former manager. Or if Nick Han comes in and says, hey, like, I got you guys your contract, something to that, you know. So, yeah, I, I get that. Let's talk about another thing it. that happened at Tradition. We can, you know, segue into again this week. Chuck the Truck Morris recapturing the Ohio Heritage Championship for a third time, three-time Ohio Heritage Champion. And he has put out an open challenge this weekend at Ignition. So I had a chance to conduct an interview with Chuck before the toe strap match at Tradition. And we even talked about it a little bit during the broadcast that this was a different Chuck the Truck Morris. This was a more aggressive, a more violent Chuck than we've ever seen before. And you saw I'm that in it. the toe strap match. I'm loving it. Oh, 100%. Even, even down to wearing the Maximum Overdrive t-shirt when he puts down Derek Dillinger for good. There's a, a violence inside of Chuck that unfortunately Derek Dillinger awakened. And I don't know who is going to answer that open challenge, but if I were them, I would be very cautious because you don't know what version of Chuck you're going to get now. And that's something we haven't been able to say before. Exactly. because He was almost he the rest of the week for us last week. Yeah. If not for a certain shameless one, I can understand that. Yeah, he was he was this close. It was real You can close. even consider him being the rest of the week this week. With the open challenge and starting off, I'm loving this new side of him. I just want to see who's brave enough to step up. And I think one name that you could throw in there immediately would be Brandon Fields. What better way to prove yourself than go up against the new champion and see if you can take the title. Well, I know there's a lot of other individuals that are going to be there, including uh, the master mime, Jean-Paul. You're going to have been up on McKenzie. one year of the mime. That, that, that's I'm Paul so excited saying. about that. Mogador marks one year, so I can't wait. And we're, we're heading back up. to Mogador on July the 15th. So and we are coming I'm up excited for, that. for Mogador. I love Mogador. <laughs> got the vibe Mogador, Ray McKenzie's going to be there. Mogador is probably our favorite non traditional venue of the year. I have time. to. I didn't get to go last year. I need to make it this year. Oh, 100%. It's because so awesome. the vibe is so cool. Last year, there was so much more stuff than there was the first year we went. Like the first year we went, there was only a couple little food stands. And last year when they went, bro, Dean, these they had fucking caramel and candy apples, Ooh. elephant ears, Ooh. you know, like deep fried Twinkies. Ooh. Like it was total like carnival vibes, dude. It was cool. We had a good time. And the, the and they fireworks. Had, like, I won't even call it a student section, but they were all they were all students from Mogador High School, and they basically took up the one area of the bench, and they rocked like they were the best fans I've seen in a long time. They kicked ass. It was a whole it was a whole vibe. DD Trash was in the crowd. Um, Ryan Michaels was in the yeah. It was a whole vibe. Love Mogador and can't wait to go back. I'm gonna have to make it to that one. You have For to sure. make it to Mogador. It's so much fun. It is. Easily my favorite event to call simply because there's a lot of variables, but the variables are more or less how loud is the crowd going to be and can you match that energy? Because at one point, I distinctly remember having to yell into the microphone to be heard. They better, they better get loud when we're there. Oh, gee, dude, you, you don't have anything to worry about. Magador brings the fire. Maybe we'll have to get some shots. The pile driver pod show out to the fans if they show out. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got the vibe. Bray McKenzie going to be ignition. Um, Ashton Day. I love me some Bray McKenzie. I've seen him on a couple of different independent shows that I've been to. There's yeah, just well, something about Bray McKenzie that is special. We're trying to get him on the pod. Hopefully, sometime in the near future. Um, that, I'll be looking forward to that interview. That's going to be a good one. Yeah, he's. We. I mean, we do have a couple matches that have been announced besides the open challenge. Yep. Um, I know yeah. Paulie said maybe Brandon Fields could answer that open challenge. He's actually already busy. Brandon Fields will be going one on one against the Huntington Beach bad boy Bryant Huff at Ignition. Okay, that's, so that's an a, interesting way to start your 
second run. Is that just exactly. announced? That's a good way. This is a good match for both men. Brian Huff get a nice needed win after Brandon Fields eliminated him in the brass ring gauntlet. But Brandon Fields, without a manager, could show out here and get a first win on you know by himself. Good we'll match. See. We talked course, about it last right, week Huff on the could show. just roll him up in 30 seconds and win it, too. It could That's go either way. Those are two terribly even competitors. Yes. Well, we talked about this one on the show last week. The newly crowned winners already have a challenger, Polly. Members only is back in OCW. Yep, I love members like that. Only, members only is back in OCW to take on the winners to try to take away those newly tag team championships. Sorry, whenever somebody says winners, I it's just an instinct now. I blame Jimmy and I blame Robbie for that. Fields and Huff could be a match of the night. Winners versus members only could easily be a match of the night. There's some bangers. We have and one. That, there's going to be a lot of great matches at Ignition, but they don't sleep on members only going up against the winners. That tag team matchup is going to bring it. That we tag, honor last we week could to... easily see new tag team champions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> The run of the winner or the tag team run of the winners could very easily be two weeks long. Oh, yeah. We had the honor of breaking some news the last episode, Mike. Let him know. We did. We got the honor of breaking the news for the main event of Ignition. The new heavyweight champion, Lord Thomas the Brute, going one on one with the former champion, the Thunderweight. The Thunderbird, Jake Ely. Like, so my question here, and not to question the matchmaking abilities of the OCW general manager, Glenn Lane. He's talking smack about you, (laughs) How does Jake Ely, how does he find himself in the heavyweight title match? He lost the brass ring gauntlet. He was the last man out. And he slimeballed his way to that spot. How does he get that? Caca. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you were any more of a fanboy of Jake Ely, your last <laughs> name would be Ely. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Well, I have. I'm, a... even, I'm even more of a fan of him after tradition. I also have a question for you. With this open challenge, could it easily be Gino DeCapo? Could it be Asher Knox? Gino said he's tired of waiting for the opportunity. This kind of seems like, and then I also seen that Asher is tired of feeling the weakest link or being labeled as the weakest link for the longest time. What if we get a triple threat match? What if Asher and Gino? Beef between Gino and Asher? What if Asher and Gino both come out to answer it? And that's a good question. And I have to be very cautious because I've given Asher nothing but hell about the fact that there's nobody who's eaten a DDP better than asher knox my hey, god in heaven hey, if he if he didn't take asher another on the show i, I like asher sure knox fu- too sure fucking bad. but here's the thing if he stopped getting hit with the ddt today and never took another ddt for the rest of his life i think he would still hold the record for most ddts taken in ohio championship wrestling history that's messed he up, just, he, he, but I, I'm a fact person. And the fact of the matter is, every single time he's in the ring with Bruce Gray, he goes down to what, ladies and gentlemen? The D D P. And nobody today does it better than the mobile home record Bruce Gray. He does have a nice pile driver. I mean, DDT. And, and Ron Mathis. Ron Mathis is pile driven yes. after Knox so many times. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could make a compilation of me saying pile driver from just I'm Asher okay Knox's with. matches. Can we make I'd that? Be, we actually need to start going through broadcast, Dean, and clipping Paulie saying pile driver. Yes. It's not the same every time. It's a little bit different. I know. I That's like why it. it would be great. And then I can use it for this TikTok video that I'm making with all the pile yeah. drivers that I've recorded. Oh, let's go. Yes. That's a pile Is driver of a pile driver. And just have Paulie in the background like pile driver, pile driver, pile driver, pile driver. That'd be great. And then three weeks later, I find myself trending on social media because of you two on TikTok. <laughs> right, baby. Just, just what I need to I be trending that. on TikTok. You know, as at the moment, those are the only matches matches we have coming up for ignition. 
We do, like Paulie said, have some people showing up that are, you know, and scheduled to appear, such as Gino, Ashton Day. Actually, Sam Holloway is scheduled to appear, just kind of tucked in there at the bottom. I Bray know, McKenzie, and I, everybody's, sing, everybody's sleeping on that one. Bray McKenzie, Kenny Cash, OCW manager Glenn Lane, obviously, and more. So can't wait to see everybody on Saturday. Make sure you get out to Kim Tam Park at Melanie Springs, 5 o'clock. Seating starts at 5 o'clock. Bell time at 6 o'clock. It, we, it'll be another great show. Another great show for the Summerfest going down, or Summer Series, whatever the OCW is calling it, the Summer League Tour. It summer... is the official start of the Ohio Championship Wrestling Summer Tour 2023. Summer there tour. you go. There you go. Summer Tour. I love so, it. That's coming up this Saturday. Make sure you get get over and get some tickets. Yes. And then we're pretty busy. We're pretty busy. Not after well, now Saturday's coming up. One week after Saturday, we'll be back out in Canton, Ohio at Stark County Fairgrounds for Neo Pro Revenge. Paulie won't be in attendance with us. It'll just be the big dog and I. But Revenge has been, you know, looking phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, let's get, we can get some of Paulie's actually. We can get some of Paulie's input on some of these matches we got coming up. I mean, I'm Pauly... disappointed I won't get to be there, but I had a prior obligation. I was going to say, Paulie, Paulie was there with us for the last one. So we got Justin Main versus, you know, the Guiding Light in a no time limit match, Paulie. That was one of the best matches, those two. It was so good. The first one. That was fantastic. The storytelling and everything. It was just the chemistry. It was all there. I was. I was. I was really surprised by Justin Maine. I thought he really, really delivered. And I wonder if he's going to be able to maintain that same level with there not being a time limit. We'll find out. Because I've only seen him once, and I liked what I saw. But I've seen Matthew Taylor a ton. And I know that if you take him to deep waters, he will drown you. Yeah. That's good. We've, we've talked about that. Um, probably my favorite match that I'm excited for the most is, is going to be the Neo the Neo Pro Showcase Invitational Showcase or Showcase Invitation. I can't remember which order it goes in. But is it this because match, it's got your boy in there, Kakawin again, dude? There, not it's got not there's not only just one. There's two. A good two one. of my boys in there. <laughs> two, two of them. them. Oh crap! Of them. All right. Who are so you going to root really for? Excited, then? I'm really excited to see Alex Daniels. In person, I've seen nothing but good things. This past weekend, um, on Friday night at Colossal Con, he picked up a big win over Christian Napier on Mega Championship Wrestling. So he picked up a huge win over Butchie B at the last show at Breaking Down Barriers. Everybody that I talked to about it said it was a five-star match guaranteed. So I'm really excited to see what he can do, especially because of the other guys in the ring. I've, I've only saw Colton Quinn through videos that he shared on his Facebook he looks phenomenal as well. Yeah. The other two, I'm hella familiar with, and I know they go hard. First of all, like you already said, the Thunderbird. Jake Ely making his Neo Pro debut. Super Kaka. excited. Kaka. But, but, the good one now, the good one now, this is another one of those Matches, Paulie. You know that I have these matches, just like at Ignition this coming week with Tommy and with with Lord Thomas the Brute and Jake. I don't know who I want to win because I'm okay with either of them winning. Yeah, I'm right I with don't you. know who I want to win this match. I don't know who I want to win this Showcase Invitational. Celo's dog. Would... Dean, here's what I need from you. What? When there becomes a point in the match, and there will become a point in the match, that the pastor. And the Thunderbird are in there face to face. I don't want you to focus on the match. Focus on Mike. Focus on Mike. I want to see his reaction. I want to see I what he's going to do. It. I want to see his brain melt as he tries to figure out who <laughs> he's supposed to cheer for. Does he cheer for the good pastor who is doing everything out of the goodness of his heart, raising money for kids, for God's sake? Around or the corner from me, baby mama's house. I know. I didn't even know I had one, but apparently I do. The concern I have, big concern now. Or does he go with the Thunderbird that he's been rolling with 
since the beginning. Since the beginning. The calling his way to the top. That's going to be mean, a tough one. Not only that, you know, you got Jimmy Jimmy Shane going against Shane Douglas. You got the Cowpoke Paul versus the Beast Man in a no DQ match. You got Studio 86 returning against the new t- tag team Saturday Night Special. Ashton Day going one on one against Patrick Hayes. And then the creme de la creme, obviously. Wilbur Whitlock and Don Tavio making his Neo Pro debut going up against Cash Inc. Now, Cash Inc. has done nothing but talk smack. They they talk smack to Wilbur. They've been upset with us here at the Pile Driver because we're not, you know, they haven't been, they haven't made wrestler of the week or anything like that yet. So they just they called out Wilbur. And he he responded heftily. Well, we saw we saw Dontavio once at, at Mega Championship Wrestling, and then he got injured. And that one match that we saw though was phenomenal. And we phenomenal. me and Dean said it on the show, I believe, afterwards. Like we wanted to see him more. So what we're doing is we're working on it probably before the show. I'm going to I'm going to uh, go with next Sunday at this point. At this I'm going to go with next show, next week's show. We're going to have Wilbur and Don Tavio on the show before Revenge so they can talk about their upcoming match. Yes. It was great finally seeing Wilbur get the love that he deserves at Tradition and at Neo Pro and, he and is... everywhere acro- across Akron Canton. This dude has really been putting in the work. Yes, he has. 20 years? 20 years. My God. Oh, yeah. I got some There's alcohol glasses. that doesn't age that long. I was just saying, he can still go. He can still go. And he's great on the mic. That, like, that pop he got is... at Neo Pro one was. I've never. Well the only time I can honestly say that I've experienced things like that are at high level wrestling events where it's like, this is the guy that you are here to see that kind of stuff yeah it, it was nuts no i agree 110 percent, man like his entrance could have gone five ten minutes <laughs> and nobody would have cared no not at all there's actually i saw some video of his entrance from neo pro and we were in there cheering pretty hard so that's yeah cool. we were. you can hear you can hear mike by the way, don't don't sleep on jimmy shane versus shane douglas that is an axe to won't. grind jimmy thinks that he was wronged and maybe he was i don't know all i know is that somebody handed shane douglas a chair and it ended up in jimmy shane's face that's just no. the way things go in a no disqualification no, jimmy, jimmy was Sometimes jimmy was, pissed, chair, jimmy was face. he no he was pissed about that the chain he shane douglas and the chain that, the chain shot he punched him in the face yeah, of that chain he, jimmy. every but it was all legal and that's the exactly. problem that the jimmy's got there is that it, yeah okay you could be a little bit mad about it but at the, the end of the day it was reversed, all legal do you think jimmy would hit him with the chain probably it was so <laughs> jimmy <laughs> has a weapon bad. called the shane chain so yes it was probably the first person on the draw that pulled out the chain was going to get you was, imagine pro- something you would do too like literally, if you had patted down Jimmy Shane before that match, he probably did have a chain in his knee pad. That's a good. No question. doubt. That's a good question. No doubt. He's in the head. He's that's up coming up on the seventeenth. So I'm really excited about both events. We got two big weeks of wrestling coming up. Um, after that, we got a couple things. You know, we got at the end of the month next month, July. We've had a big, huge announcement. Fight Night Wrestling is coming to Akron, Ohio, or coming back to Akron, Ohio. Apparently, Paulie was telling us before the show that they've been around for a while. Um, they kind of just, you know, haven't done as much or haven't, you know, they're they're making their comeback. We'll say there's definitely been a around... history to it because they have champions. Okay. They've had matches somewhere. I just haven't been able to track down a whole lot about this. Yeah. Well, Brandon Xavier's running things over at Fight Night Wrestling in the. Director in creative knowledge. And B-I-C-K, if you will. I yeah. I didn't want to say it, but man, he that, he called that's himself a hell of an acronym. <laughs> well, he called himself. It was it was bigger than that, actually. Let me see if I could find the whole thing he said. It's spelled out dickhead, though. <laughs> he did it to himself. Jeez. Get it together. 
director in creative knowledge. That's a that's one way to put it. Yeah, yeah director in creative knowledge, head executive as something. It was it was funny. I laughed about it for a minute. Um, but they're uh, they're coming up, you know, July thirtieth, and he told us that there's going to be a giant main event that we're not going to want to miss. So far, we've had a couple people already kind of announced. So for for Fight Night Wrestling. Saturday night special. We just talked about them. They're going to be making their Neo Pro Wrestling debut next weekend. So I'm excited to see them, see what they're bringing to the table. They'll be at Fight yes, Night sir. Wrestling. Yes, sir. They seem to be getting around the area, too. So another one that I'm really excited about. He's been one of my favorites at Mega ever since I first laid eyes on him. He's seven foot tall. He weighs 450 pounds. Can't teach that. Paxton Calloway will be at Fight Night Wrestling. That is a colossal individual. I've seen him in person. Jeez. I yeah. hope that they've reinforced the ring. I know that's cliche, but my God, when he gets into no, a ring, you have to make sure you reinforce it. He's definitely a big boy, and to have him, you know, show up and be our be ready to be there is pretty exciting. They like have Ashton a was people. announced. We talked about him. Ashton was announced. Um, Shogun is in there. They have somebody I'm not too familiar with. Um, Don Tavio is also on the poster. Oh, yes. But then, like I said, they have Kit Page. And Ray Stewart is also on the poster. And Alex Daniels is also on the poster. Along with their um, their champion. Well, it was he oh. was their champion. He's no longer the champion. He's been stripped of the title, according to Brandon Xavier. Marcus Knight. Wow. Is- yeah, he's coming here to change things, and he's going to start it off by stripping the dude of the title, and they're going to announce so, at a later time what they're going to do to determine the next. It almost Vacant. feels a little bit like WCW and when uh, Bischoff and um, Russo took over. They came in and wiped out all the championships and said, we're starting over because we want to have a clean slate. Can't fault anybody who's in charge of creative for that. I mean, right. you can't no, really I do can. much when you have – pieces already in, on the board you got to start over yep i'm excited for it i'm excited what's going to go down i'm excited to see how they're going to determine the next champion i'm assuming a tournament of sort but uh i'm excited to see who's going to be involved in this it's a nice looking title as much as i love a good tournament as much as i love a good tournament team i would rather see something akin to a royal rumble huh? give everybody an equal shot ladder match yeah, do a ten man ladder match. Just go up balls out with it. Even if even a four man ladder match would be sweet. I mean nobody's or ever six. done a ten, so I'm just like, let's throw ten at That'd it. That'd be absolute mayhem. I know. That's what you that's what a fan dreams about. Mayhem. Absolute mayhem. That would be I don't think you can do that on a video game. Eight is the maximum. Eight? Even eight seems like a lot. It's almost impossible. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, it looks like it's going to be a good time. I'm seeing some stuff. You know, their title, if you haven't seen their title, their title actually kind of looks like the undisputed title that Brock Lesnar used to have. Mm-hmm. One like of my it. favorite titles of all time. I like, I like it. it. It looks really. It looks really good. It looks exactly like that. It just kind of has the FNW logo at the top instead of the WWE logo. And I mean, it looks like there's some other little subtle changes here and there. Fight Night Wrestling, obviously. I mean, I like this belt a lot. It looks, like I said, very similar to the Undisputed title, but there are some subtle nuances, subtle changes that make it look phenomenal. Um, again, I'm all for more wrestling around our area. Whatever Love I it. can get my dip my hand into, I want to get into it as much as possible. Yes, sir. It's great to be a fan of indie wrestling because even if you don't like what's going on now, there is something for everybody exactly. somewhere in the area. Exactly. It's beautiful. So now Paulie, I wanted to ask you um, on your thoughts, obviously, you know, we don't talk much WWE much around here anymore. How do you feel about this bloodline storyline? <laughs> Cause it's choice. It's going too long and I'm tired of the nepotism that it's created. It has gone a little bit, but I, I, I the mean, swerve and it's looking like things are about to implode. It's got me kind of rejuvenated. Like, 
I'm kind of getting back into it, but, but I'm still like. But realistically, do you think the Usos would have unified the tag team titles if they weren't related to Roman? No. And we would have had much more compelling tag team stories for the last year instead of, oh, we all got to try to beat the Usos, which nobody could until WrestleMania. Like, yeah. It, it's frustrating to me because there are a lot of people, a lot of great talent that deserve an opportunity that we're getting held back because Roman Reigns is the top guy and he's going to push his family. I mean, I'll give you that. That's I get that. That's been my problem all along. How do you feel about Jimmy Uso kicking him, though? I'm, 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 I'm sorry, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Without getting too political, I hate it. Because it happened in front of the wrong crowd. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I get that. I'm with you 100% on that. You gave that wow. to a crowd that, that doesn't care. They're just there because it's the thing to do that night. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree with that 110%. I, I wasn't a fan of them dropping the um the title to Rollins in that crowd, you know, like I wasn't I wasn't okay with that. I thought that was BS. Cause you know what do they need what do they deserve that for? Why do they oh, yeah. get why do they get our, our championship? Like we're crowning a new championship. Um and they get it to, to Saudi Arabia? Like what? Why? That makes no sense. I can answer that for you unfortunately with one simple answer. What? WrestleMania did $35 million in its last iteration. $35 million? $35 million. Lord. Two, two Saudi Arabian shows a year do $100 million. Guaranteed. Yeah. And that's why it happened. Okay. It's all about the money. It, and that's, yeah. that's one of those things when you are like me, you try to find out why things are happening the way they are. Yeah. All you got to do is follow the money. That'll answer yeah. all of your problems. And all no, the questions. I, I mean, I get it. I understand. I, you know, it's a money grab. Blah 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 blah. blah. I mean, you're happy because your boy Seth Rollins is oh, now the only 100%. person, the only person to hold the WWE Championship, the Universal Championship, the World Heavyweight Championship, the NXT Championship, the Intercontinental Championship, the Raw Tag Team Championship, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship, the United States Championship. The uh, the, uh sure that there's something I'm missing. Did he hold the 24 seven Championship? Audience, no. Okay, we'll move on about that. Uh, he's held everything. Oh, sorry. Money in the Bank winner. Royal Rumble winner. Has won the title at WrestleMania. The only th- And won the title in the main event of WrestleMania. Whether he only cares to he's missing, or not. The only thing he's missing is like a King of the Ring. Like, yeah. Do you want that? Yes. No. Dear God. K- King of the Ring mostly kills people's careers. Bring yes. back the European title. Let him have that too. I agree with that. I'm down for that. As many European as we have these days it would be nice to have a european title a lot of discussion about nxt europe having a european title as opposed to the united they're kingdom championship they're still doing like NXT that. Europe? it's in the rebuilding stage oh, so okay. when they unified everything at worlds collide it was with the intention that they would take the ones that were really really good bring them over to the mainland get them ready for the next step and build up the next crop of talent that could build nxt europe the yeah. ultimate goal is to have a regional NXT in like every major country in the world because they want NXT Japan, NXT South Africa, or, or I think it might be somewhere around. Uh, shoot, it's in the middle of the country. I admittedly, I don't know enough about all of the continents, but That's okay. NXT. NXT South America, NXT Mexico, NXT Canada. Like, they want all of this. Yeah. I don't know if they can do and all that, though. It'd be cool. Oh, if they, they did. can't. They can't. That's the problem. They overextended themselves. They can do that. It would cost too much to build all that stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely. They have, a, they have a developmental center in Orlando. Europe. Oh. Well, they have one in, in Europe that they're not using really anymore because yeah. there's no NXT UK. Yeah. Uh-huh. So how much money do you want to put into it? I know there's been a lot of discussion about WWE wants to run a pay-per-view, uh, sorry, premium live event in India in September. I've heard that too. I've heard that too. Um, and that means well, Indus Share is going to get a hell of a push. I mean, well, let's talk about some other news, you know, pro-related, because I want to hear Paulie's thoughts on it. We did get a couple big matches for the next Forbidden Door. Um, 
Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega for the United States. Say it, Polly. The IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. There you go. That's going to be a fucking phenomenal match. You think Five you're going to butcher that? Yeah, oh, I was going to butcher it for sure. <laughs> um, also five... worth pointing out that on Dynamite, they talked about how Kenny Omega has left the country. Yes. But he's not in Canada. He's in Japan. So whatever, whatever's going on with Kenny Omega, not just important okay. to Forbidden Door, but could Is be he bringing the other half to... of the Golden Lover. There's been a lot of discussion. I've heard a lot of that. I've learned a lot of Kota Bushi coming back. Um, and another match we got, we don't know if it's for sure yet. I haven't heard confirmation, but Brand, Brian Danielson showed up at the last, what was it, Dominion was the last one they had? I believe so. And Brian Danielson showed up on the Tron and has challenged Okada to a wrestling match. Ooh, buddy, that and, one might go harder than Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay. Yes. And to be fair, he didn't really challenge him to a match. He or challenged his up. manhood. Yeah. He challenged his ability as a wrestler. Yeah. And if there's anybody who you shouldn't be calling out for their wrestling ability, for the love of God, it's Okada. Yeah, so. Even a, a <laughs> casual New Japan fan like myself who isn't deep in the trenches watching all their stuff, no, knows same. who Okada is and oh, yeah. knows that this man has been carrying their freaking torch forever. Wow. For 20 years. Yeah. It's nuts. This, so, is a, this is a literal dream match. Yeah, we're going to have to get together for this one. This is going to be a match we're all going to have to watch together because this yeah. is... Yeah, I'll, chip in, over. I'll chip in on that. When is, right. It's uh, Sunday... June the 29th, I think it is. Something. Yeah. We'll 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 chip in and get it. We'll talk to we'll talk to Lil J. We'll see what he's got going on. Maybe we'll make that an event. Um, and you know, normally around here we do a, a top five to end the show, but Paulie proposed an idea for us. So from now on, when Paulie's on the show, we're gonna introduce a new segment called Oh, it's called Paulie's Ponderings. Holly's ponderings. I love it. This is oh. that point in the show, like in a little, you know, when we get the little, it, with the little yeah. graphics and it pops across. Yeah. Yeah. If Kevin's watching when he edits this, he has to put in like a shucky ducky quack quack thing. I get like a little logo down here at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, nice. that boss. We'll, we'll make, they'll try to see, we'll see if we can make that happen for you. But Paulie's going to ask a, ask Paulie a does, question. The hammer demands it. Paulie's going to ask a question <laughs> hammer that, time. Has, that has no right or wrong answer. It's a very open-ended type of question. He's going to propose it to all of us, and we'll each give you our answer as to what we think. So the idea behind this is to just get a little bit of discussion going about a topic that you're not necessarily thinking about, but is always out there. And what I was thinking about, because I've had this idea for about a week or two now that I've been kind of playing around with it. What is the most important moment in the history of professional wrestling. Michael, I mean, I, go know, first, though. I know my answer already. Go ahead. Hulk Hogan, NWO. Okay. Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan becoming a bad guy after he had been a good guy for 20 plus years was the most, in, at least in, like, again, this is all circumstantial because uh, ask somebody that's 70 years old, you know, that, that's been watching wrestling since, you know, Bruno was around, they could answer differently. But in for me, as a 35-year-old man, the most influential moment in my wrestling life was when Hulk Hogan came out and dropped a leg drop on Randy the Macho Man Savage and joined the NWO. Bash at the Beach 94. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, see, now that's just interesting to me because I just want to see where – our fandoms maybe are because I think that's also an important part of it. You said it yourself. Somebody who's a bit older might lean towards some of the older stuff. Yeah. But it's always an open-ended. That one's, no right that one's up there for me as well. Um, another one that's up there for me is probably when the franchise Shane Douglas threw down the NWA title. And that was kind of, if that wouldn't have happened, like ECW wouldn't be what it was. Um, and the ECW itself changed the landscape for a lot of what we see today in wrestling too. 
so that's that was a that was a big moment as well that can be discussed in there when he refused the NWA title and threw it down and declared himself the Extreme Championship Wrestle Champion. It definitely changed the course of history forever because you don't know where we would be today. Exactly. Without that moment, like Paul Heyman might not be a thing. It's true. Agree. One of the greatest managers, if not arguably the greatest manager of all time. And arguably going into the Hall of Fame in Philadelphia in uh, 2024. Which he should. Also. Which he should. I, that's a slam dunk. If he doesn't end if up they, in the Hall of Fame, they're they drop the ball on that if they don't. If they somehow it's don't either, make that happen. It's either that or they wait until New York again, but I don't... I, he got to do it in Philadelphia. I mean, he doesn't have to be retired. You see them did that with Rey Mysterio this year, so... That's true. You don't have to be retired anymore to be in the Hall of Fame. You Look just at get Edge. The, yeah, yeah, you just get in the Hall of Fame, so... Yeah. Al Goldberg, I think, held a championship after going to the Hall of Fame. Now, Polly, do you mind if we ask you what is yours? Sure. Um, I would probably have to go back to Hulk Hogan as well, but it's 1984 and Madison Square Garden against the Iron Sheik. That moment really changed the trajectory, not just of the World Wrestling Federation, because without that moment, you don't have that superhero rise for Hulk Hogan. But you could also go back to some Hulkamania, like exactly. But you could also kind of take it back a little bit further and go to the moment where the Iron Sheik wins the WWF championship in the first place because he beat Bob Backlund, who is the third longest reigning heavyweight champion in history. And he did it very suddenly and also, by the way, did not do it clean. That match was ended by a towel being thrown in. Okay. Without the Iron Sheik, you don't get Hulkamania. Is Sheik and Hogan the longest going feud in wrestling history? Yeah, he's still talking shit to him <laughs> on Twitter today. Every he day. He said something yeah. shitty about Hulk Hogan today. Every day. Every I day. Check my phone up. right now and double check and see if he said something horrible <laughs> on Hulk Hogan. And you know, Bubba, you better right believe now. he taught he did something. I'm looking Probably called right him now. a jabroni. He definitely called him a jabroni. Like the Iron, Iron Sheik, Sheik is the greatest. I love. I watched uh, the documentaries on the Iron Sheik the other day, and man, half the stuff that we know about the Iron Sheik is wrong, and the other stuff is just like, wow, he did what now? Like this that's dude how, was. That's, the... that's kind of how I felt about like New Jack when I watched the Dark Side of the Ring on New Jack. I was like, holy shit. Like, I knew New Jack was a fucking badass. Like, I knew he was crazy as shit. But, like, just wow. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just wow. Oh, yeah. You know, he, like, has, he, he hasn't Iron said anything Sheik. about Hogan. Iron so. Sheik should have been the all-American hero, not Hulk Hogan. Iron Sheik defected from Iran as the Shah's daughter's bodyguard. Came to America only knowing two words, which were the name of the... Olympic wrestling coach lived with him was the assistant coach for the United States wrestling Olympic team for two seasons, like two sessions worth of the Olympic games. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Like the, the, this didn't is know that real. Either. I didn't know that either. He, he legitimately is one of the greatest stories in American history. That's nice. Pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. I love the Iron Sheik. That's why Obviously. when you guys keep trying to get him to come after me, it's like, no, I have nothing but love and respect for the Iron Sheik, Bubba. Fuck the Hulk Hogan. Well, that's, I mean, I love it. Paul, he didn't say Paul, anything about him. Paulie's ponderings. That is you a sure? fantastic idea. I love it. Every time you come on, make sure you got a pondering question for us. Thanks. I can't wait. You know, to see everybody again, I know it's only been a couple weeks, but this Saturday we'll all be together once again for OCW at Kim Tam Park at Melanie Springs. Get over there, get your tickets, bring a chair, come hang out with Granny and Jared, me and Paulie and Big Dean, and, you know, everybody. General Manager Glenn Lane will be in the place. It'll be a good time. Bob's Hamburg was there. You can come early, go swimming. Sir. Sure. Come hang out at Melanie Springs. It'll be a great time. I'm sure I'll be shirtless again. Even more reason to come, people. Hey-o! You can see the hammer. 
shirtless. <laughs> well, well, that's about once all the we got. Uh, once the videos okay. pop up on social media, you'll understand that a little bit better. People will be blinded by the whiteness. That's about all we got. Oh no, 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 we no, do no. Want, that's... Yeah, no, they will. <laughs> we do want to say thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to everybody at Believe Land Media. All the other podcasts. Give Guardians us a follow. Go follow double. Yeah. Double play CLE. Go, go ahead and follow. get over and give Yo Pauly and Lil J's podcast to follow. Double play CLE. They got a new episode coming out shortly. They're going to be talking about some guardians, about some other things. I was talking to Lil J earlier. He was talking about his hit hitting some bets. Hitting some bets. So maybe we'll get a little sports betting segment out of him. But other than that, boys, do you have anything else for the people? Nope. Drink your water. Be good to each other. Love wrestling, man. Wrestling's for everybody. Love wrestling. Love Thanks. wrestling. It is Thanks wrestling for joining for us once again. We appreciate you so much every time you're able to come on and hang out with us. Absolutely. We'll see everybody you, else this, this Saturday. We'll see you.